can, we can start to do what you, what you saw on the, on the, on the publicity posters, and maybe you read, like everyone, Ahmed comes back! Yes, so, uh, no, no, just, wait, 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 wait a minute, I can explain to you. So, yes, no, sorry, yes. However, uh, before returning to the stage as uh, Ahmed, a theatrical character, I owe you some explanations. Because if you come back, hmm, it's very different from simply coming. Coming back means, first of all, that you left. So, we left. First. Second, that from the place you left for, you travel, you come to your point of departure. So, coming back is coming, of course. The pure act, the, the bodily act of coming back is obviously an act of coming. But, be careful. Coming here means coming from where you went, where you decided to go there, meaning where you are coming from, but in so far as you are coming back. As you can see, not just anybody can come back. So, now, why am I coming back? And, to begin with, who is coming back? I say I, but this little word, I, it is never very simple. Being able to say I means, first of all, being the subject. And the subject isn't just a question of grammar. It is also a very serious political matter. Yes, because there are those who say that in our modern countries, the subject is a probably Indian or British or French citizen who has a proper name so that the government of his country recognizes him and no one else by this name that is his and his alone. The true democratic republicans gentlemen tells us that those who are not citizens and who therefore suspiciously may not be full subjects don't have proper names but only improper names. Names like, uh, so, by example, in France, because actually France is the country I'm coming from, so it can be names like um, uh, Abdel Kader, you know, or Mehdi Ben Barka, or Modibo um, Kenta, or even, uh, it can be something like, you know, Patrice, very French, Patrice, it's very French. Patrice Lumumba, or uh, Thomas Santara Burkina Faso, or Ruben Ruben Umnio. So, you see, names that don't have nothing really French about them. Names that are not very proper. Besides, that's why we killed almost all of them. Almost all the guys who had these supposedly proper names. And it's a good thing, too, says the, you know, the conscience and organized uh, Republican, Democratic Republican gentlemen. The, you, you know the, the Jules Ferry style gentlemen. Oh, sorry, maybe you don't know who Jules Ferry is. He's a very famous guy in France because Jules Ferry is the guy who started the Republican educational system in France in the 19th century. So, and uh, Jules Ferry said, like that, I quote, so you have to imagine France, Paris, French assembly, Jules Ferry, very fat guy, uh, with big voice, with like that, hair, you know, no hair. <laughs> and uh, so, Jules Ferry, <clears throat> the duty 
entre supérieur récise et sous civilise si inférieur récise. You see what I mean? No? In this very republican style, one thing is very clear. We have to take the improper name that those uh, inferior races are bringing around and turn them into proper names. So, if you have an improper name, I'm very sorry, you are not an appropriate citizen and therefore not a subject who can come and come and go and come back, in which case, get yourself to customs. We will pick you up and deport you to where it's all the same, whether you have an improper name or even no name at all. So, it's a bit uh, strange, no? As a start. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. Because, okay, no, no. Let's start again. And from you, you are here in this room, this uh, bench like that, waiting, okay, like that. So, and you read like this. Without thinking very much about it, you read, Ahmed comes back! Gentlemen, uh, I'm very sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to shelter me. 
moment for the rights of men and for the rights of women, of course, even if this isn't the case with me, and for the rights of everything that is or can become neither man nor woman, uh, nor even the rest, if there is a rest. <laughs> I'm being hunted, I'm being persecuted and racialized. Dear audience members. I come here onto the stage not to perform, but to ask you for the right of asylum. Yes. Um, what I am asking for is very simple. Um, uh, I'm going to pretend to perform before you and if the police arrive, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you will pretend to think I am an actor doing my job before you while you do yours, which is to watch me as an actor perform. Mm. Uh, I will perform performing and then we will really be in the right of asylum. <laughs> ah! Careful! There is no noise! Maybe the police! So, take care, take care, take care. So, okay, okay. The best thing to do, this is to do what I saw, what I asked. So, okay, uh, I will tell you the whole story as if I were acting it. Okay? So, let's start. Like that. Oh, so, I was sleeping in my bed. Uh, nothing special. <laughs> But suddenly I wake up and I see just above my face those of two policemen, one with a mustache and one with a beard. But what are you doing here in my bed in the middle of the night? <sighs> Listen, buddy, it's been certified by the law that we can search for houses in the middle of the night without warning or calling first by breaking down the door of Islamic terrorists. Mm, preferably Arabs, Africans, uh, but also Pakistanis, uh, Nigerians and Syrians, whether they are real, unreal, symbolic or Imaginary. So, uh, we've seen the posters for Ahmed Comes Back. Uh, and this is curtains for you, you swarthy terrorists. <laughs> and uh, the one with the mustache takes a walk at me. But I gather my forces and Take out from under my pillow my Ahmed mask. I put it on my face. I stand up naked and masked and I shout, Ahmed is born. He has returned from hell to punish you! This terrifies them. <laughs> and uh, they take out their big guns. <laughs> By a clever ruse, I escape from them, run into this place without watching in front of me or behind me. I rush to India, Chennai, Pondicherry, Roma, Roland Street, Indiana Stream Theater. <laughs> Yet here I am, imploring you to grant me the right of asylum, of theatrical asylum. 
There is. Okay. So, okay. I think I did them. So, no. We did them. Thank you very much. We did a great job together. So, now you can relax. Really. You can stop pretending to be the audience. And I will stop pretending to be an actor. Uh, let's go back to the real. I mean, the, the real of the imaginary. <laughs> because the police is the real of the real. And well, you don't mess around with the real of the real. <laughs> come on, let's continue as it is written. Yes, yes, come on. Hey, hop, hop, one, two, three, yes.
No. <laughs> uh, um, no, uh, the ladies and gentlemen, uh, and also uh, the boys and girls, uh, kiddies and tiddlers, titties and doggies, not to mention the old and the young, the mortal and the immortal, uh, to say nothing of uh, um, the, the, the rubes and the boobs, the dudes and the prudes. So, no! I no longer have the courage to tell you what, what incredible, inaudible, invisible, implacable, impertinent, um, insane, inconceivable, intolerable, imperial, and even, uh, no, 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 you won't believe it, and even, oh no, 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 don't insist on it. We will see it some other time. Uh, let me find the door. You are happy to see, right? I could have disappeared. No, don't get me wrong. I love appearing. <laughs> uh, uh, an actor who doesn't love appearing is like a, a dog who doesn't love opening. <laughs> so, imagine that I am a dog. <laughs> now, uh, okay, um, seriously, hmm? get a handle on the idea of me as a dog. Let's start again. I go slowly for you. Look at the door. It's amazing. This is a door. Look, look at the door. <laughs> What's happening? You don't find me adorable. <laughs> and then you want to deport me. Listen to me, you supposed supporters of the theater. Stop trying to deport me because I like appearing as a portal, um, and especially an unsupportable portal. Oh, 
I, I have a fear to, to tell what. I don't know. <laughs> really, I am here. <clears throat> what is that? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Hmm? I'm going to change my lights. I'm closing the door. It's all ripped. Plunk. Hey, what? Yes, it's a two. Are you sure? It's here. Okay, here I have to tell you. Oh, okay, let's forget about the door. <laughs> what, is, what is this? Uh, 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 uh. What? <clears throat> So I have to explain to you, yes, that, to explain to you uh, what I saw, the, the immense and intense thing that happened, um, uh, the event that I had witnessed and that my duty, as I've been clarifying for you since scene one, even if we are about to arrive at scene uh, three, my duty, therefore, in scene one, was to tell you by scene three, at the latest. Uh, okay, so, <clears throat> I was supposed to start by explaining to you what an event is. Yes, I was supposed to come back as a philosopher and to tell you what an event is. Is, is it clear? No, it, it's straightforward, huh? the paper said it. So, I repeat, I have to come back mm -hmm. as a philosopher mm -hmm. <clears throat> and to tell you mm -hmm. what an event is. <laughs> paper disappear. swallowing salt, or swallowing shrubs, or in uh, swallowing fire. I can do them all, mind you, but swallowing paper is the one that disgusts me the most. I'm terrified of paper. So, as a philosopher, I speak without paper. Uh, and even I write without paper. <laughs> Which is even better. <laughs> How is it possible to, to, to write without paper? Uh, so, you think I can't afford to waste my time explaining things like that to you when the event awaits us? Let's sit down. So, okay, stay like you are. Sit down without any paper for waiting. Yes for waiting for something to happen. <laughs> yes, now, you know, the thinking uh, about the event can only and must only begin with waiting. Very specific waiting for something to happen at last.
think is definitely going to happen? Uh, maybe, are you able to feel it? To feel that? Maybe you can't feel the world. You know the world? Uh, the world of... <laughs> The world is out of what, you know? It is not in its right place, you know? Because of <laughs> People are acting weird. Even I am weird. <laughs> and you, down there, in front of me, you are weird too. What are you doing here? Sitting there, lined up in a row, looking at me, maybe sometime like that, or, 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 or like that, or, or on the side. Okay, no, so you have to check. I can see your eyes. Are you okay? Is there a No, it's good. It's good. It's good. You understand? Okay, so it's perfect. I think I understand now. So you are thinking something is going to happen. So it's clear, it's very clear. So we are here to wait together. So let's wait all together. This is where we think it going to happen. We can wait like that for you, but where? Where is it going to happen? Uh, at all? Maybe we don't know about the room. No, not sure. No, you, you, you are confident. I feel it. Ah, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, no. oh, no. Or maybe to the right, because there is the door. Yes, um, so 
You can check if it happened someplace else, but uh, there has been no event, not here anyway. But uh, I warn you, uh, checking someplace else will be very hard because someplace else covers a lot of territory. So it will be hard to check and to explore every single someplace else. Okay, good luck. And but, oh! Oh, oh my God! Oh, God. oh yes! Oh, wonderful! Yes! No, you know, yes, really. No, it was the event. <laughs> exactly. You know, just that. Yes. Yes. So, but you know, it's always the same story. The event always happens when you are not waiting for it anymore. So, when you are waiting for the event, you are wasting your time. It's better to be surprised. Uh, let's not wait anymore. Starting today, we won't wait for any more anything anymore. <laughs> At least we've learned that. Yes! <laughs> but, uh, let me point out that there is something problematic uh, about this event that happens unexpectedly. Uh, be before getting on the, to the extraordinary thing I, I saw and that I came to clarify for you as an event, I have to ask you a question, just this question. So, listen to me, it's very serious. <clears throat> oh my God. Okay. Is, is what happens unexpectedly, without our waiting for it? Is that really the event we were waiting for? No? Or is it something else entirely? How can we know? Because the event doesn't have a name. It doesn't arrive like a package that says, For the Diego Loss and the audience uh, signed even event X. The X. We don't know what the X of what really happens is. This is the problem. Okay, just relax. Um, say uh, you are at a party, like that, you know, with a conflict. Oh, <laughs> 
This is the love event that has struck your brain. Uh, yes, uh, sorry. Usually people said the heart. But for me, Ahmed the philosopher, love is completely in the brain. Love is a nervous lightning bolt that strikes you and circulates all the way along from the head to the genitals at the completely random first sight of a begonia or a cigar. But the name of this um, cerebral sexual or sexo cerebral lightning bolt that strikes me. Hmm? The proof that its name is very hard to find, this is that I will end up saying, saying like everyone else, that, oh, oh, I am, I am in, I am in love, I am in love. That's all. What? Yes, I am in love. You are in love. Yes, I am in love. <laughs> He's in love. Yes. And what about? I am in love. Okay, stop. Because now there is this guy here. This is a this is a philosopher, a French philosopher called Badiou. And Badiou claims that the name of an event should be like in poetry. But so but Keep in mind something, this is that we are never forced to believe my colleague Badiou, okay? So, but Badiou says that the name of an event must be drawn from language like poetry because poetry is what makes language say what it was incapable of saying, this language. And so, I will not say that I am in love. No, I'm going to say something like uh, the lightning bolt strikes me from head to groin, just as it does when begonia leaves. Speak, if you will, of a fire on the lawn, of an ardor that's widely consumed. Burning by night with the glow of a flame, I exhale to the world my beloved's name. Light of my life, radiant star, there can be no match for Mr. Cigar. <laughs> and there you have it, the deed is done. I've named the cerebral sexual event of my fall into deepest love. There is nothing like poetry.
Sorry. Uh, yeah, I haven't come to this place uh, to offer you neither dance, nor trance, nor trance dancing. No. Uh, I came back onto this stage only to tell you about the transcendent thing I saw. Yes. No, yes. Transcendent. But what does that mean? Huh? Transcendent. So, it's very easy to remember if you just think it's, uh, it's something like a, you know, sort of dance. Sort of dance, like a trance. But, but wait, there is more. Uh, a dance where the dancer left his dentures in his dressing room. So, his trance is a transcend dance. <laughs> and in fact, that is what transcendence is. An, an amazing thing, but it has no teeth in it. It's trance, but it doesn't make a dent. Uh, okay, this is like God up above. God is trans. God, uh, but uh, he doesn't have his dentures. So, God is your typical trans and dental. <laughs> well, so, okay. So, what I saw was an event so transcendent that before, that before telling you what I came to tell you about a while ago, <laughs> namely uh, the transcendent thing I saw. And after going on about what an event is, uh, I had to explain to you that the naming of what happens like an event, uh, especially if it happens in, in, with transcendence, so it happens in poetry. Which means that only now can I tell you what I saw and heard, which transcended all measurement. But uh, before, first, I have to introduce my cousin Fatima to you, because she is like an event, and she is therefore transcendent. Uh, yes, even though in theory, my cousin Fatima that seen Three. Well, so today scene three comes after scene six. <coughs> uh, note that normally scene three is especially designed to make scene four possible. Uh, and we are approaching scene seven without having gone scene three nor four. So, okay, what I'm going to do this is that uh, I'm going to do three and four between six and seven. And uh, since I have already done another three and four, I'm going to go easy on myself and just call those new three and four, three and a half and four and a half, right after six and right before seven. And all to say what I announced in one and which will probably happen in none. <laughs> If everything goes well, of course. So, I will start by stating and restating the facts. I have a cousin named Fatima. Don't get too carried away with excitement, okay? Because it is a fact that facts don't affect you much, which is why you need philosophy. Because a philosopher is someone who can't stand it if a fact is treated as a matter of fact way. Because it is a fact that my cousin Fatima exists. And if Fatima exists, it's because her being as Fatima exists. And because therefore Fatima is 
And if she is, she thinks. <laughs> yes, because on this point, Descartes' famous saying, uh, okay, uh, I will tell uh, about Descartes. Descartes is a famous French philosopher later, okay? So, Descartes' famous saying, I think, therefore, I am. Uh, this is wrong. <laughs> no, the truth isn't at all I think, therefore, I am. No. We have to say, on the contrary, I am, therefore, I think. And this is what I am applying to my cousin Fatima. If Fatima is, exists, so she is, and if she is, she thinks. So, the person who thinks that Fatima is, but doesn't think, is the, so the racist, anti-feminist. Yes, um, so if, uh, since Fatima is a woman, says the racist anti-feminist, of course, um, she thinks uh, very little or, <laughs> or not at all. <laughs> and since she is an Arab, she does not think at all. Or very, very, very little. The Western fascist, racist, anti feminist sees Arab women and also black women everywhere in the street. Oh, it's an invasion! And he would love to be in some elsewhere, all to himself. Another Europe, a true Europe, without any black or Arab women, and of course also without any men of this invasive species, whether they are black, Arab, Muslim, among others. Let's go elsewhere and build 
a new and authentic white euro. If only they would let them go, we would be able to breathe more easily. We could be brothers and sisters with all the blacks, Arabs, Asians, Latinos, and all other outcasts of the planet. But nothing doing. The fascist, Islamophobics, and other French, uh, very uh, anti feminist they stay. Mm. And they are enraged at seeing that my cousin Fatima, who they think doesn't think, well, that she is. But I, Ahmed, a foe against Descartes and against enraged Islamophobia, that every woman or man that is, by virtue of this fact, Things. As I just showed you, my cousin Fatima thinks because she is, and not the opposite. But you don't know her. And if you knew Fatima, my transcendent cousin, you'd tell me I was wrong not to have introduced her to you sooner. But is it possible to know sooner that one has known her, a person one doesn't know, but who'd have liked to have known if one had known her? Uh, uh, by the way, this is what knowledge is. So, uh, the guy called uh, Socrates said, Real knowledge is to know nothing, on condition that you know that you know nothing. Hey, which doesn't make sense, because then you know something and not nothing, you know nothing. So, but I will tell you it's better to know the nothing which consists of knowing nothing by knowing you know nothing, than knowing my cousin Fatima. Because as far as being nothing like nothing is concerned, my cousin Fatima is kind of like that. It's quite simple. She is nothing like nothing, which is the complete opposite of being nothing at all. So let's suppose you meet my cousin Fatima and uh, you say to her to get her riled up in the good, old, vaguely racist way, You, Fatima, and all the Arabs who came from North Africa, you are just nothing at all! Well, my cousin Fatima would have replied to you just like this in the sweetest, most polite tone. <sighs> With all due respect, sir, you must be mistaking me for someone else. <laughs> because I am nothing at all, nah, like uh, nothing at all. <laughs> in fact, I've always been nothing like nothing. Uh, but with that, but also very tactfully, in this uh, inimitably civilized way, my cousin Fatima would have let you have it with her knee right in your left testicle. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, I can say that some of you down here, not so far in the first row, are wondering why I am speaking here about a so distinguished audience, about a racist left ball. <laughs> yes, why bother to attack? Why even refer to so an interesting, so squalid, so I don't know, so Oh yes, so stupidly spherical, you know, an organ as some racist left test. So, there is a cause for that, and the cause of why my cousin Fatima always strikes the left testicle of her enemies is her political convictions. That's right! The, the right especially the, the traditional right, is a bunch of crooks. Uh, the left, especially the left that says it has taken the democratic turn of modernity. You know, the, the modern left is also a bunch of crooks, but everyone doesn't know this. So, to strike on the left is to let it be known that one knows very well for what it is, what everyone thinks he knows but knows badly. Namely, nothing other than the left! Ah. I've been telling you from the start, no? My cousin Fatima is a total event. That's why she is transcendent. Ah. Uh, but notice that my cousin Fatima always strikes the left testicle with her right knee. I always wondered why, and I asked her the question, why? And so I'm going to give you the answer, but I prefer to warn you, this answer is very very. Uh, it's a kind of, you know, apolitical answer, strictly military. Uh, I attack frontally. The left testicle is in front of the right knee, not the left one. And then I attack frontally. Oh, and this was where I realized that my cousin Fatima, uh, behind her sense of strategy, as a philosopher, she is a materialist. So, uh, I just tell you the three points of my cousin Fatima. Huh? One, one must be nothing like nothing, not nothing at all. Two, one must always strike on the left. And three, taking symmetry into account, one must always strike with one's right knee. And she had a very special point for the left-handers. Yes, those who can't hit the left testicle with their right knee. So, my cousin Fatima says that they have to strike the right testicle with the left knee. Frontally, so obviously the right testicle is less political, but in an emergency, you have to do without politics. Um, basically, the only weak spot of my cousin Fatima is that uh, she's got nothing planned for women. Yes, so, if you are a man, racist, and you meet my cousin Fatima, the best thing to do is to say to her, right away, very politely, Oh, please, this is Fatima, neither right nor left. I am a woman. <laughs> and that will disarm her. Uh, so, that is if she believes you, of course. Yeah. And 
the best thing to do in, so that she will believe you is to put on um, an Islamic headscarf. <gasps> there you are definitely a woman. Uh, you say to Fatima as soon as you see her very softly, uh, neither right nor left. Ah, Allah Akbar! And you are safe. You saved both your right one and your left one. This is a truly philosophical, truly dialectical piece of advice. The Islamic scarf for men in order to defend themselves against a woman by passing for a woman. So, I think you are sufficiently prepared by the total and transcendental event that my cousin Fatima is. So, we can go forward. As you can see, when I, Ahmed, come forward before you, I come forward masked. So, Descartes, the great, you know, you remember the great, the very great, the tremendous philosopher, said it almost four centuries before I, Ahmed, did. I come forward masked. No, so you have to imagine the wind, you know? And the 17th century, yes. You know, very serious. This is the famous philosopher. Yes. Uh, so, and, but he said it in Latin. Yes, and I think tonight it's normal to say that in Latin because we are in Indianos true. So, let's say it in Latin, please. In Latin, let's start. Larvatus <sighs> Prodeo. That's a resounding utterance. Um, let's say together, okay? So together. Arvatus Prodeo. Oh, so, but you know, you could ask me if I am able to say it in Arabic because I am Ahmed, no? So, no problem. I'm absolutely able to say it in Arabic. One says, Atak haddan man, mutan haddan. But, you know, tonight, especially tonight, because we are in Indian Ostrom Theater, Rue Romain Roland, in Pondicherry, Tamil Nadu, so we can say it in Tamil, of course. So, Mugamudi and Hindu Varugilen. One more time, for the pleasure. Mugamudi and Hindu, I could say that also. Mugamudi and Hindu Munal Varugilen. So, but you know, just for the pleasure and as a gift, just like that, another language. Kamenot skete, warewa susumu. But you know, the point, the most important point, it is that I, the Arab, come forward towards you truly masked. This is not like the tremendous philosopher who said it in Latin. His larvatus prodeo uh, was a joke, a, a, a rhetorical figure. Uh, for him, Latin was the mask of French when he said, um, Larvatus Prodeo, he meant, I am putting a mask on the fact that I am coming forward masked. You know? So, but it raises a, a real good question Can a mask be masked? Yes, I, who am truly masked, can I, right now, before you, mask the fact I am a mask? Yeah. 
Like that? No, because uh, uh, like, like that. Or maybe if I stop. It, it, but but no. Conclusive, no? no? In order to mask the mask, the best thing to do is to take it off. But my bare face isn't what is under the mask. It is the mask that, I'll be, that has been masked from the outset. You can imagine the complication. I come forward towards you, masked by my face, and when the actor puts on my mask, in reality, I am unmasking myself. It's too complicated, huh? No, let's forget about it, forget. Let's forget. There. We've pretty much covered the question. Because tonight, the mask was the subject, the subject of the play. Yes. So uh, I will bow out now. I'm taking my final bow out. I'm going backstage, where you find what is behind the scenes, behind the mask, beneath the subject. And you think a little, huh? uh, be a little. Sometimes one, sometimes the other. Ooh. You are a mask. I can tell that many of you are wondering why Ahmed came back. No? Why, as a philosopher, and what all of this has to do with philosophy. So, my dear friends, I'm going to tell you. Uh, Philosophy is exactly this. A thinking whose real content is thinking itself. Or rather, thinkings. For there are very different kinds of thinking. Uh, there is thinking in mathematics, thinking in poetry, thinking in love, thinking in politics, when politics exists, which is not very old. And uh, philosophy is when thinking agrees to confront all of these different thinking. Thinking confronting the various thinking, that is philosophy. And uh, philosophy sees that in thinking, there is what happens suddenly. There is what lasts. There is what needs to be worked on. There are the different finite moments of a sort of uh, infinite construction. And uh, in thinking, there is joy. There is uh, enthusiasm. There is uh, happiness. There is pleasure. Which means that philosophy is also confronting and giving way to the joy of thinking. As, um, as, detestab as detestable as the world may be, hmm? there is always a point in yourself, a personal and obscure point that is the point of departure for thinking what is. Hold onto that point. So find it and hold onto it. Philosophy has no other goal. 
Let everyone find his point and hold on to it. The point that is the point of view. The point that allows everyone to invent and not to repeat. For repetition is the path of imposture and pain. Stop repeating. Be irreplaceable. Not because uh, you are yourself. No, no, no. No, but because you have found in yourself the active point. The point that separates us from our fatigue and our private monotony. And then philosophy is like um, when uh, uh, sunshine splits open the clouds. Or like when after the winter you hear the cry of the first bird. So philosophy is what helps us to interrupt repetition. Separate yourselves. Separate yourselves from yourselves. And then, with that real in you that splits you open, there is thinking and joy. Hey, you dead people. <laughs> Get up. If we are all philosophers, the face of the world will change. And if we are nothing like nothing, we will be everything.